you are a member of the International Scientific Council at South Tyrol State University, could you elaborate on the development of South Tyrol State University during the period of your cooperation? What does the university need to focus on in order to move forward? Right, so there's been some consolidation in terms of the operations of the university, if I, if I understand correctly, because I missed yesterday. <laughs> So that's good because it's improving the efficiency of how things are run. And in doing that, it's also easier to focus on the finer problems. So I think going forward, emphasis has to be put on fine tuning operations and uh, removing weaknesses. Um, the concept that uh, has to be a focused direction for the university seems to have been discussed yesterday. This is something that needs quite a lot of thought because changes to ensure that that focus is realized is not so simple. Um, so I think the discussion over the next few days will be important. We'll see. Tell about your current and future cooperation with South Wales State University. The first question. Then, um, <coughs> Tell about your current and future cooperation with South Tyrol State University. Yes, yeah, so at the moment we're part of the committee that's coming to evaluate uh, methods for improving the ranking of the university and the operation of the university. It's my second visit, so we came uh, last year, and I think in October. And uh, at the moment it's still advisory. We haven't really done much more than done that. How does the international scientific community view South Euro State University? How can the university attract international researchers for cooperation? Yeah, I'm afraid I can't really say how the international community views South Euro State. But I can say that there are ways to improve collaborations and improve the, the international visibility. And one is to uh, get international researchers to the university, to spend some time working here, working with the colleagues, working with the students. The other is to get students from South Ural State University abroad. If you can get them to spend six months or three months, six months or a year abroad in a, re in a f foreign research lab, uh, then uh, this will help a great deal. So money has to be put down <laughs> to enable these exchanges to take place. Um, you know, money for bringing researchers across to spend time working here and also money to send students abroad at the master's or PhD level or even the postdoc level. This would help a great deal. George Bernard Shaw once said, science is always from, it never solves a problem without creating them more. What do you think are the biggest global challenges facing humanity today and how universities can contribute to solving them? First, I disagree with, with, the, with the, the, the idea that we're always wrong. I mean, many things are right, but in the process of discovering new things or finding solutions to old problems, we always uncover new questions. So it's an ongoing process. And um, humanity's problems at the moment are the, the large population growth that we've seen over the last hundred years. So we've got an increasing number of people, we've got increasing resources uh, that need to be developed or maintained to keep people f healthy, fed, water, so problems with agriculture, problems with energy supply, and uh, problems with population control. Because obviously if we carry on at this rate, we're going to have some very, very serious problems going uh, uh, very quickly going forward. Uh, dealing with these uh, issues uh, has led to problems with, well, not dealing with these issues has led to problems with the climate. Uh, although that's still open to question by many people as to whether it's directly related. But making sure we don't do further damage to the planet as we expand the population is another issue. So, with respect to the universities, this is a, a more tricky question to answer because industry has all the money. 
So really, uh, industry to a great extent has the financial resources to tackle these problems much more effectively than the universities. The universities should be focusing their efforts to discovery and training people to be able to contribute, both in industry and in academia. I do not think it's the university's responsibilities <laughs> to tackle problems which require vast financial resources. Uh, this has to be taken care of by industry. In your opinion, what are the necessary skills a student needs to have in order to build a successful career in chemistry? A successful careers in chemistry now are, are I won't say they're impossible, but there is a, a, a lot of pressure now because there are Uh, the employer technically now has uh, uh, an open market. There are many graduate students, many PhDs with chemistry degrees. Uh, this is making it tricky for students on graduating to find a good employment. So what does a student need to do? He needs to be exceptional. He needs to be determined. He needs to make himself clearly uh, uh, the superior Uh, candidate for a, for a career. So this means that they cannot finish a degree with average marks, average skills. They really need to be in the top 5% or top 3%. So the goods, uh, a good student now has to be extremely determined, very competitive and open to uh, a broad array of opportunities that may be in front of him. They mustn't go into their careers with a very narrow, focused view on what they want. They need to be uh, capable of swapping directions or things like this. What is the future of chemistry? Will there be any breakthroughs or is most of the chemistry already done? This is a great question. Uh, really, chemistry um, is still making significant breakthroughs at different levels. Uh, we're getting to understand biology much, much more uh, deeply. So the chemistry is now starting to overlap significantly with biology, biochemistry, biology. So there is a uh, uh, great progress that can be made in that area. Also, material science. Our ability to predict properties of um, molecules and solid state materials is improving because of the computational power that exists nowadays. So chemistry expects to make great progress based on this ability to make predictions. So I think chemistry still got quite a lot of room for progress. <laughs>